Hello there everyone, it's Lilis again and a warm, warm welcome to my channel. This video is the first in a new series I'm calling Mindful Genshin. We'll be wandering through Teyvat, gliding through the cliffs and cities of this beautiful calming game, chatting about tips and approaches for playing Genshin Impact mindfully, with intention, to relax, and to practice being present. Or just to calm yourself on bad days. Discovering the rich lore and the story that is left for us to find, and so much more. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting new videos on mindful gaming every single week. You can also join us on Twitch Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Our community there is warm and welcoming and very friendly to new Genshin players. To begin this series, I thought I'd start by outlining a few reasons why Genshin Impact lends itself so nicely to mindful gameplay and how I personally use Genshin to relax, unwind, and ground myself in the present. If you are new to Genshin, it is a completely free to play Gacha game currently available on PC, mobile phone, and PlayStation. There have been mentions of it coming to the Nintendo Switch, but no announcements on when exactly that will be. It reminds me quite a lot of Breath of the Wild in both visuals and gameplay mechanics. It has a rich story, unique and engaging characters, and a really beautiful and growing world to explore. Actually, one of the first things most people notice about Genshin is how beautiful it is. Genshin has visually stunning, immersive environments and settings, and a soundtrack that is intentional, detailed, and often moving. Frequently, to unwind and practice being present, I'll turn on the game just to travel to one of my favorite places and idle, listening to the music, the running of a waterfall, or a thunderstorm, the occasional mutterings of my character, watching as the sun rises and sets, and rises again. No matter the noise or stress in my mind or in my surroundings, I practice just allowing myself to be for a little while, thinking about what it would feel like to breathe in the mountain air or feel the crunch of snow beneath my feet or watch as a little fox sneaks by for some fruit. There is so much to marvel at in Genshin. It's a game that almost begs you to just sit and rest and wander within it for a little while. One of the most important markers of a game that can be played mindfully, for me at least, is a rich and immersive setting, and Genshin's Teyvat is one of my favorite worlds to visit. Not only are the regions of Genshin visually beautiful, but they're also interactive. When I play, I make it a point to notice the change of the weather, imagining what it would feel like to be out questing in the rain, or how warming the morning sun must feel after a cold, wet night. I love that I can climb almost everything, swim through the pools and the oceans, chop and collect wood from the trees, harvest wildflowers and berries and apples, and my personal favorite, glide through the sky. This freedom of exploration and play helps me ground myself in the fictional world around me, giving me a real, lasting sense of calm as I sit and play. One of my favorite things about Genshin happens to be what can make it feel somewhat overwhelming to new players. There is so much to do. There are primary story quests, called Archon quests, character story quests, world quests, essentially side quests, and of course, limited events. All of these have rich story, characterization, and lore to get lost in. Then there's the work of building your characters and weapons, fighting weekly and daily bosses and enemies for materials, fighting in domains for materials and artifact sets, and one of my favorite things, collecting resources from around the world, like flowers and mushrooms and fresh and supple ocean plants. There are so many areas to explore and puzzles to solve and rare items to collect, 
strategies to learn for being more effective in battles, and more. I approach all of this with a simple but guiding mindset. Taking my time, getting lost, allowing myself the room to wander aimlessly and make mistakes and notice the smallest details. I am in no rush to level all of my characters perfectly and completely for the simple reason that I enjoy the slow work of doing it. I make completing Archon quests and story quests and event quests feel like a treat or a ritual. I set aside time for them, make a cup of tea and a snack, put on my coziest clothes, and allow myself the space to retreat into the world of Teyvat. I read dialogue slowly and carefully, challenging myself to pay close attention to hints and little details of lore and expressions, to put myself into the conversation, laugh at jokes, feel my relationships with characters growing. I wander through new environments, take wrong turns, stumble through puzzles, and open every chest I find. I imagine what it feels like to swim through the Inazuman Sea, or glide through the city of Mondstadt, or sit beside Zhongli for a meal in Liyue. I build characters I might not use all the time just because I like them. I try out team compositions not only based on combat effectiveness, but also because I can imagine them traveling the world together, bantering and laughing and getting to know one another. This is my guiding principle for most games, playing in a way that helps me practice getting lost in the present, enjoying the slow process of growing and changing, embracing mistakes and how it feels to learn from them and get stronger, and recognizing that almost everything has a story to tell, a small detail to note, a nugget or reward if you only stop to pay attention. I mark my progress and skill in Genshin, as in all games, by what I get out of it, how it changes me, how it makes me feel. Like Animal Crossing, I enjoy playing Genshin with a daily routine in mind. I don't always stick to it, but I use it as a guide for getting me into gameplay each day. Genshin actually provides this structure and rewards players for completing objectives, a checklist of sorts. For new players, your checklist is the handbook. The handbook provides a list of activities that will help orient you to the game and rewards you for doing them. I recommend new players make their way through these slowly and carefully. There's no rush. For players adventure rank or level 20 and above, you also unlock the battle pass. Battle Pass rewards you for completing daily, weekly, and essentially monthly tasks, and can provide a nice structure for daily gameplay. You don't have to do every single thing on the Battle Pass to unlock all of the rewards, which allows for some nice nuance and choice in how you decide to play the game. I'll go into my own personal daily and weekly routines in Genshin in a future video in this series, so stay tuned. In addition to questing, resource collecting and character building, and battles, there's also a player home feature called the Serena Teapot. This unlocks after the Liyue Archon quests finish, so it takes some time for new players to unlock. But it adds a whole new layer to the game. The ability to decorate a small subworld with a growing list of furniture items. The Serena Teapot is aptly named because spending time here and building it up is incredibly serene. The environments you can choose for your teapot are all beautiful and soothing, and you can build everything from cities to little neighborhoods to forests. This feature warrants its own video or two, and we'll get to that on this channel in time. But it is worth mentioning here because it is perfect for days you want very relaxed gameplay or you want to be creative. You collect resources all over Teyvat to build furniture, unlock new recipes over time, and work on slowly building up your teapot world with interior and exterior furniture. You can even invite characters to your teapot, have conversations with them, and build up friendship with them. 
One of my personal favorite parts of the teapot is the ability to farm plants and resources and place creatures around. My own teapot has foxes all over. Working on building comforting and beautiful environments in my teapot and then spending time there when I need a little extra help relaxing has been really fun. On days where solitary time in the serenity pot is not really your cup of tea, Genshin also has the option for co-op. Playing with friends is a great way to make some of the harder battles a bit easier, and it can be a really silly and fun way to unwind. I love getting together with friends to roam around and explore, fight weekly and daily bosses, and do little photo shoots. Finally, I have to mention the lore and the story. The world of Teyvat has a curious, mysterious, and layered history that comes out through the story quests, events, and written lore. And paying attention during cutscenes and dialogue and reading in-game books has made me feel even more connected to the characters and regions of the game. The scope and careful, intentional details and engaging storytelling helps me to ground myself in the worlds and characters and practice being present, giving me something to focus on during hard days or teasing me into the world on days I'm feeling more distracted or stressed. So those are just a few of the many reasons I play Genshin Impact to practice mindfulness, unwind, and feel better on hard days. If you play Genshin Impact, would you add anything to this list? Let me know in the comments below. If you are new to Genshin, do you think you're going to try it out? Or are there any videos that you'd like to see in this series that you think would be helpful? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of this series and more mindful gaming videos. You can find my Twitch channel and Discord in the description below if you'd like to join us live or spend more time with a community of mindful gamers and Genshin players. Until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and spread some joy around.